I want to bring in Dog the Bounty Hunter now. He has worked to capture thousands of criminals from across the country and is joining us now to talk more about this case. I appreciate your time tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, this violent convict was out there hiding right under their nose for three weeks in the area where he escaped um, not too long ago. What questions do you want answered from authorities at this hour based on what we know? Well, I've uh, worked next, right next, elbow to elbow with Brian. So Brian's a very good on the scene reporter. And as to quote him, uh, tight lips. Well, tight lips sink ships. Uh, it, it's not a policeman's fault, not a cop's fault. But if information on all the last four or five guys that I've chased, which have been killers and caught, either caught them or they've committed suicide, no information is released to the public. And I don't understand why all of a sudden that's starting. Uh, if, if there would have been more information released, for instance, no one knew that this Lopez guy had escaped before and eluded the authorities in a wooded area for I think it was nine days, nine weeks, something. What we were told was he, he was in the Mexican cartel and of course, everybody thought, well, he headed straight for Mexico. We didn't know that when he was convicted, the DA kind of made it sound like he was the one that snitched on the cartel. So they had like a hit out on him so he couldn't go back to Mexico. <clears throat> Ironically, I've been in those in, in the 70s. Those are called Bluebirds, the bus that he was in. And I hope it's not one of those buses since the 44 years that I've been there. But, you know, he must have worked his cuff loose, <clears throat> overpowered the guards. If we would have known that he's done this before and could make it in the woods, there would have been more hunting. Right. I have used bloodhounds for 30 years. I can't believe a bloodhound get, didn't find him. But we need the information. We're the citizens. We need information. Quit hiding this stuff from us because you see what happened? Five people are deceased. Yeah. Well, the other thing that stood out to me right from the beginning was the bystander who was driving by. And let's play that video again for people at home. But they were driving by and saw Gonzalo Lopez running away from the bus out into the cow pasture and towards the woods. And she said, there he is. He's right there. And as she drove by a number of, of law enforcement officers, they said, yeah, we know. So the question is, how critical is that moment that they did not give chase and go after him when he was clearly still in sight? It is absolutely the most critical part because this happened in Dannemora, you know, as you remember years ago out of New York, where they escaped from the Clinton, two guys from the Clinton prison. And uh, it, it happened exactly the same way. Most of all the cops were, you know, 800 miles away. Me and my crew was five minutes behind the second guy. He walked up to a police officer, said, hi, what are you doing? And the cop was like, oh, nothing. And all of a sudden the guy started running. Again, no information <clears throat> that might work of work 20 years ago. But right now with the internet, people paying attention to stuff more than they ever had. We need the information. We need to know what, what we're facing, what we're looking at. It doesn't mean that you won't get a conviction or you won't find the guy because someone knows. When I go after people, I, I pass door to door, their picture. The reason I'm so successful, because everybody knows. Mm. Right, and that's the scary part, because I want to play some sound from a neighbor in the area. Uh, they had let their guards down because they thought the search had expanded outside of Centerville, where he originally escaped. Uh, I'm, t I'm being told we don't have the sound, but the neighbor said uh, he was wearing camouflage. They had a graduation party, uh, dozens of people in their backyards at the time, uh, and they had let their guards down and were not prepared uh, that he was hiding in the woods around them. Um, talk about the public's role moving forward and the lessons learned in this case, because in every manhunt, there are lessons learned. Um, what do you want to see happen as a result of this? And what do you want Texas authorities to do in terms of communicating um, their investigation of their investigation? Well, Texas, you know, I was there and again in the 70s, and I thought they were one of the greatest police departments or sheriff's departments in the world. What happened? Uh, they got a black eye right now all across that state. Share the information. Let us know. 
We'll let you be the hero. We just want to be instrumental in the apprehension. We want to be able to watch and wait, turn our alarms are on in Texas, of course, load the shotguns and get ready to keep this all secret, secret. This is what happened and happens. People get murdered. No, we need to know. Yeah. And uh, in the beginning, they were forthcoming and they were standing in front of cameras. But um, as they had no more updates, that that's what they communicated to us. We have nothing more to share with you when we have something to share. Uh, our 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 hope was that we could continue to cover the story and get it out there for people at home. Uh, real quickly, I just want to play. Um, I spoke to a member of Crime Stoppers in Houston, and I want to get your reaction to what he had to say about the unimaginable grief uh, now for this family that didn't have to die. Just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't. This is unimaginable grief. You had a grandfather, you had four grandsons, ranging from 11 years old, two of them, to 16 to 18. The 18 year old had just graduated high school. I cannot even fathom what must be going through this family's mind, right? This is just unimaginable grief pain and agony. And it didn't have to happen, right? He said, you've seen, I've seen the worst of the worst, and then you see something like this, and um, you don't know what to do with it. Well, and there's a certain, you know, the information officer, of course, takes his command from the up above officer, either a captain <clears throat> or a lieutenant. So probably, I'm assuming that one of the upper echelon you know cops told the information officer don't say nothing again that doesn't work we need to know I, you know i personally the guy is a murderer from the same prison that i spent time 44 years ago i was on it once i heard he was a cartel you know he was involved in that i thought he headed straight for the border mm -hmm. <laughs> if my i and my crew would have known that he's he did this before we would have brought our bloodhounds down there. A tragic end um, to, to a situation that was three weeks uh, in the making, and he was hiding right under uh, law enforcement's nose in the area he originally escaped. Dog the Bounty Hunter, as always, appreciate your time coming on tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.